Absolutely the hardest character to cast, bar none, in this film. You know, when Ryan told me that he was going to build a model of the house, I thought to myself, that is so like Ryan. Was 112 Ocean Avenue. People think, oh, he's crazy, but I thought, no, that, that's Ryan. He's just, he just wants to tell the story right, and the house is, is a character in this movie. It's, it's a big part of this movie. When I started the film in 2006, we had had a lot of discussions about how are we going to represent the house? Because obviously, people know the, the DeFeo house because of the Amityville Horror. They don't necessarily know it for the DeFeo crime. If you say DeFeo, most people don't know who you're talking about. When you say Amityville Horror, ah, yes, the house with the, the eye-like windows. So I felt like the house it was very important to have an accurate representation of the house, you know, throughout the film, that, that it would be a character we would see all the way throughout. You needed to show the house, and we couldn't do it by just showing an old picture, so we had to build the house. First thing we endeavored was we thought about building the full end, the west-facing side of the house with the quarter moon windows, in full scale, and then erecting that and so we started working on that in October of uh, 2006. And just the sheer scale of this thing made it almost impossible to work with. By the time that I got the sun porch built, got the sun porch framed, and we framed out the, the three-story side of the house, it became evident that this was going to be a logistical nightmare to work with, you know, and it was going to require a great deal of space to assemble the thing in, and then there were various uh, other factors to consider like wind, how do you stabilize something this big? And so it, what seemed like a good idea at first didn't become the most practical idea to, to execute. The other reason why the three-story facade wouldn't work is because I came to realize in doing some camera tests with the sun porch that we had really nowhere to go in terms of how we shot this thing because you had to almost you almost had to shoot directly on a dead angle or you lost the effect because if you went this way the slightest little bit, it was evident that you didn't have the whole house. So I then met with a couple of guys from a digital effects company thinking that maybe what we can do is we can wireframe the rest of the house onto the facade and we can work with some green screens and some material like that. It became very apparent at that point that even going that route was gonna be cost prohibitive to create a, a wireframe uh, image and to morph that into the existing footage, you were looking at $100,000 to just pull that effect off and that may only get you one or two scenes. So that became really impractical. The third idea became one wherein we built a model of the house and I knew that I needed something probably at least half scale to, to pull it off. And when I started, I didn't think that half scale would be any big deal, not really realizing that I was going to be dealing with something that at its peak was going to be about 18 foot tall. And that's quite an undertaking. That's something to deal with when you build something on that scale. Like everything, the idea begins on paper. And we began with a series of, of conceptual sketches and ideas as to how we could practically build this thing. My father had some great ideas and implemented some great design features into the into the model like building in a second floor platform that we could stand on and work on to be able to reach the roof with ladders. Well I remember on the weekends Ryan would set out and to work on the house and every Monday I would get updates on the progress and in the beginning, you know, it was like a shell and think not, nothing much of it, didn't look like much. But every weekend, it just started to grow and it became, you know, it came to life. And I, I was just, again, amazed at the precision, uh, the attention to detail, getting the, the windows right and, uh, and just the, the scale of it and, and, and painting it black and lighting it up and, and putting a little religious statues in front of it. It was, it was just a lot of fun to see and 
And again, people think, oh, he's crazy. But I thought, no, that, that's Ryan. He's just, he just wants to tell the story right. And the house is, is a character in this movie. It's, it's a big part of this movie. Because this house is very rectangular and it's not really of any, any type of exotic shape, um, the idea to build it very modular played out and worked very well. In other words, we built the, the house in literally in square sections and then literally just set it all up on top of each other and put it together and joined it. Construction of the model began in September of 2010. And that particular year in California, we had an extremely wet year with a lot of, a lot of very wet storms coming through. So what we thought we could build in about two, two and a half months um, actually became more like a six month process because we literally lost two months of weekends to work on the project to rain and to wind and to bad weather. So it took, uh, it took a lot longer to build this than what we originally envisioned. Well, also being the, the financial person on this documentary, I was very cognizant of the bills that were coming in on the building of this house. And I have to say that it wasn't really as expensive as I thought it would be. Um, you know, Ryan with his dad and his brother did, did a great job. And, you know, we're pretty resourceful. You know, when you're an independent uh, film producer, you have to find ways to save money and just be resourceful and be a DIY, as I call it, or do it yourself. We used approximately 200 plus two by fours. Uh, I don't know how many sheets of plywood we went through. It was just an enormous amount. The side of the house was made out of quarter inch plywood. Um, and it was literally drawn out, run through guides and literally cut down into strips. And then we randomly cut the shingles just with no specific dimensions or anything. So that way they would stagger and they would vary and, and there would be no pattern to them in the end. So in the end, every one of those shingles had to be put on by hand. I remember when I first saw the house, I thought, holy crap, this is one big house. Um, and again, the attention to detail, I, I, I was just pretty much giddy over it and, and overwhelmed by the, the amount of work that it took to build it. But it was pretty fun to, to see it. And one of the challenges of doing a project like this is that you can't buy materials that are in half scale like you can for other models. Like if you were building a one-tenth scale, that would be a whole different story. But in this particular case, we had to basically make everything from scratch. We had to make the windows. We had to make the shutters that, that went on the windows. We had to make the front door of the house. Um, we had to make the chimney, you know, and there was a lot of, a lot of very time consuming, tedious work that went into handcrafting that stuff. And a lot of times you don't know going into it how you're going to create that or how you're going to do that. So it becomes kind of a, a, an experimentation with a number of different materials in order to be able to find the effect that works best. The whole time that we were building it, I was uh, running around with a camera and shooting a lot of pictures, obviously. But one of the main things that, that I wanted to shoot was I wanted to shoot a lot of test footage because I wanted to see how this thing photographed and how it would look on the screen. So what we ended up doing was we actually ended up using an old cinematographer trick to over crank the camera and, and get a higher frame rate that for whatever reason, why it works, I don't know. I'm, I'm not scientific in terms of cameras, but it worked very well and it actually made the house look a lot bigger than, than what it was. In doing some of the test shots, I actually sort of discovered what I wanted the opening credits to part one of the film to be by doing a time lapse of the model when it wasn't even complete. And I realized that if I could get a very dramatic sky, you know, over top of me in a time lapse, that it would look phenomenal. So that's how the opening credits kind of came to be, basically based on some test footage in an, in an accident. I thought um, the effect of the house in terms of even having it at a half scale, I thought it just worked wonderfully. The way it was lit, um, you know, it, it was just a great way to be able to cheat perspective. And I think once you get drawn into the scenes, you're not even gonna think about the house being 
at half scale. You know, I think it was a great idea that Ryan went the extra yard, 10 yards to even build a house because I, looking back, I don't know how we could have filmed some of the, you know, really, you know, real dramatic scenes in terms of the family fighting in front of it, um, the, the cops arriving in the evening to the 911 call. Um, you needed to show the house and we couldn't do it by just showing an old picture. The DeFeo era of the house was primarily in the film the era that we were capturing when it was painted black and trimmed in white. Uh, we did all of our shooting, we did all of our footage, we were done with principal photography of the model in its black and white color scheme by the end of March 2011. And so at the end of March 2011, we took a couple of days and we painted the house beige and trimmed it in black to represent both the era before the DeFeos in the film and the era after the DeFeos when, when the house became the Cromerties. Because obviously I didn't know if we were going to really talk about that material a lot and how deep we were going to go into that and how many visuals we would need. But it, I decided that since we had the model, we might as well shoot everything that we can shoot and then we've got it in the can even if we don't use it. I remember when filming was done, I remember Ryan said, you know what, I'm going to have to demolish this thing now. And I thought to myself, why? It's like we had all, you did all that work to it. It's, it'll be a nice little, you know, monument to keep it, keep it up and maybe, you know, have on, you know, people come visit it if they were, you know, since obviously a lot of people are so into this story. But um, Ryan said, no, I have to, I'll have to, you know, demolish it. And, but I did feel a little, you know, why destroy something that you put so much work into? but I understood why you had to do it. It was sad to see the house go, but I have to say at least it'll live forever. It'll live on forever in the film.